Yo, so today I'm gonna do my July Rewind. I read six books in July, so that's okay. I'm not, I'm not gonna turn into one of those people that's like, oh, I only read this amount of books, oh, and, you know, beat myself up about it. I'm grand, because I'm reading more now than I used to, so. So let's get into it. The first book I read was Revenge by Yoko Ogawa. I got this out of the library in June because I wanted to participate in Japanese June, but that didn't happen since I ended up getting sick. This is a short story collection. It's 11 short stories that are all connected in some way. And it is phenomenal. I absolutely loved it. The first two stories are a little dull, but then it gets progressively weirder and I'm all about the weird. I recommend this if you're into macabre type of stories. I'm gonna do a separate review of it because I just loved it so much and I just, I want more people to know about it and read it so like I have someone to talk about it with. But I gave this, I gave this four, four stars on Goodreads. It's really more of a four and a half, a uh, 4.5, but it's, it's, it's really good. Then I finally finished Requiem for a Dream. My oh God, this is depressing, like, I wasn't prepared for how to like I knew it was going to be depressing but fuck's sake. I started back in May and I read about 70 pages and then I put it down because I was just like I'm not in the right mindset to read this. It's just too heavy for me at the moment. I don't want to read something that's going to bum me out and I'm going to think about it later and be all like mm. It's, it follows a son and a mother. I preferred Sarah's story to Harry's. I found Star Sarah's story just absolutely heartbreaking. Basically, Harry is a drug addict and Sarah, his mother, has some form of eating disorder. I, I wouldn't know what it is, but she's on diet pills and she's just focused on getting thinner and thinner and thinner. And I think the saddest part about the book isn't actually the drug use or any of that. It's just that you're watching their dreams die. At the beginning of the book, they have all these dreams and it just never happens. And then their lives just totally fall apart. And it's just fucking hell. It's just such a fucking depressed fest. If you're into depressing novels, this this is a great book. I gave it four stars on Goodreads. I really liked the way it was written. It took me a while to get into the rhythm of it. But after, after about a couple of pages, I kind of got into it. I don't want to say like, oh, I recommend this because I'm just, I'm getting sad thinking about it. It's just like, no. Oh god. After that I needed like a light fun read and I think I read, I think I read this next, I read Ready Player One. Yeah I didn't like this at all. This is another one that I think I'm going to do a separate review on because I just, I have so much to say about it and like not good things and everyone raves about this. Everyone's like oh my god it's, it's one of my favourite books blah 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 blah. How? <laughs> okay, okay, it's not for me to question others, but it really wasn't my cup of tea. I generally don't like quest books anyway. When this book wasn't focusing on the quest part of it, it was boring as hell for me personally. I didn't like Wade. I can't remember his avatar's name. I kept calling him Pretzel in my mind, but I know it wasn't Pretzel. I liked the idea of the book, but I don't think it was executed perfectly. I think there's a lot of places where it could have been improved, it could have been worked on more. I found the quest itself got quite repetitive. It came across to me as like, you know when you're watching someone else play a video game, you don't want to be that person who's watching someone else playing a video game, you want to be playing the video game and that's the feeling I kept getting from this book of like just frustration. It's just no, it just it really wasn't, it wasn't for me at all. Two stars and that's me being generous with it. Then I read, I can't remember if I read this before or after Ready Player One, but I read The Sandman Volume One. I got this at the library. My friend recommended this to me years ago. She, but like when we were 13 or 14, she was like, you need to read this. And I was like, oh yeah, okay. And I just put it in my memory bank, you know, my mental TBR. And when I saw it, I just snagged it. Basically, it's about these people who are trying to capture death so that like no one else will die anymore. And they end up catching the Sandman, who's Death's brother, instead. So like, first of all, that's interesting for all these characters and they're related, it's like fucking awesome. Um, he gets out and then he has to find all this shit that was kind of stolen from him when he arrived. Some of the artwork in it is so like gross. I found, especially the woman who had the sand, she's basically, she's been using it and she's like a junkie. She's, all she does is sleep all the time. She's covered in bed sores. She's all scabby. Here, here's a photo of her. I liked all the violence in it, of course, of course I did, but I'll definitely be continuing on with the series, that is if the library has the next couple of volumes of it, because the library tends to be assholes and not, they'll have like one or two volumes and then you have to, they don't have the other, I don't know, anyway, I gave this four stars, I can't remember, yes, 
And then I saw this kind of lying under my bed because I hadn't been able to fit it on my bookshelf. I saw The First Time by Cher. Yeah, this was just like, I read it in pretty much one sitting. And now, like, my Cher trivia is like through the frickin' roof. Ask me anything and I'll be able to tell you straight away. I didn't know, first of all, Cher's dyslexic, which explains her Twitter. I don't mean that in a bad way, but like sometimes you're like, it's a quick fun read. There's some things in it that kind of bothered me, like small things bother me. There's a lot of typos that I'm surprised weren't actually caught. There's grammatical errors that bothers me and things like that. But it is, it was just like, I just needed a light read and this did it. So I think I gave this two stars. So like, I liked it, but it's nothing um, phenomenal, but it's Cher. So it's immediately fabulous. And then the last book I read in July was Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. A lot of the time when I finish a book I immediately know what rating I'm going to give it, but this is one that I didn't know what I was going to, you know, put on Goodreads. I think this is one that definitely needs to be thought about after reading it. The reason why I gave it three stars versus like four was because there's a lot, a lot of build up and not a lot of action. You're basically down to the last 50 pages before the good stuff happens, which I find kind of irritating and it's, you know, it's always the same with horror novels and horror movies, it's always like the last 20-10 minutes where shit goes south, so I guess maybe it's just a tactic, but, you know, it's kind of hard going reading a, a 400 pages and you're still like not there yet. That was my only problem with this. So yes, yeah, so three stars, possibly four stars, I don't know. So those are all the books I read in July. Now on to my other favorite things. The film I saw last month that I would really recommend is a film called The Voices. Now don't watch this if you're overly sensitive, if you don't like dark humor, especially exploring mental health, because you'll probably be really offended and then you'll complain about it on Twitter probably. Brian Reynolds is in it. You're one from Pitch Perfect who's always singing is in it. It's about this chap who works at a fridge factory factory and I don't want to say anymore because I watched the trailer and the trailer is just such a spoiler but it is it's fucking great and it's one of those cult movies it's not already like a cult movie but it's got that feel to it especially the ending credits that was just weird and it's also directed by Marjin Satrapi the woman who wrote Persepolis so there's that. And then my TV recommendation, which isn't really a recommendation, it's just what I was watching. My favorite thing that I watched last month was King of the Hill, season five. King of the Hill is probably one of my all-time favorite, if not my all-time favorite TV show. But yes, I finally got this last month. It's fabulous. If you don't watch King of the Hill, like what the fuck is wrong with you, you should totally watch it. So that has been my July Rewind. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.